What's up? It's Issues, and you're watching Rock Forever Magazine. Hey guys, it's Tori from Rock Forever Magazine, and I am here right now with the guys from Issues. How's it going today? Really good. Really good? Really yeah, good? Yeah. Three out of four of us are wearing hats. Oh, oh this nice. is pretty fashionable, actually. I didn't even notice that until you no, said it. it's kind of tacky. Maybe you oh. should sit here and I should sit. <laughs> no, nah, it's cool. It's Gonna <laughs> alternate the hat situation. Yeah, just kidding. We're good. How are you? Very good. You guys are in St. Pete, and this is a really cool venue. Are you guys enjoying the city so far? This is yes. one of my favorites. Yeah, yes. Oh, yay! Yeah. Nice. Awesome, good to hear. This place okay. next door has amazing crab cakes. Really? Yeah. Good to know. <laughs> know what I'm doing after the interview now. Yeah. But we are going to start with some finished sentence for you guys. I know you two already did this last time and it was a blast. So let's see how you oh, two geez. hold up now. Yeah. Now the first concert you ever went to was... We should pass this down. I think everyone's going to have different answers. Oh. Mudvane and Corn. <laughs> NSYNC Christmas. No way. <laughs> yes! <laughs> If, if you want to be technical, it was Barney. I saw Barney that live in concert. the best answer I've ever heard. Yeah, it was that cool. That was my first concert. Too. Really? Technically. Yeah, technically. technically. And he put on a good show. I was a stoked. Uh, I think mine was, mine was Hanson with my oh, mom. Oh, <laughs> that's I still have never seen, yeah, yeah, yeah. I still have never seen Hanson, and I'm so jealous, but our booking agent books them. So oh, I'm sure no we, we're going to see them next tour they do for yeah. sure. Yeah, you definitely, you have the hookup. So now yeah. you got to make it happen. And now two boy bands for your first concerts. I was not <laughs> expecting that from Issues. So yeah. now I know. Really? I wasn't. Okay. Well, Issues is now, but think of where we all were when we were kids. Like, we were on a whole different plane of music. So yeah. it's all good. Well, I guess it's good. You're influenced by a lot of different stuff, I suppose. Yeah. And now the highlight of your career so far was when? Oh, shoot. That's a hard one. When we confirmed the A Day to Remember tour, which is the last time we were here, if you consider it the career of issues. Um, and then when we confirmed this tour with the Premium Horizon, those were like our biggest goals for, for like the first up and coming like, um, period of time for right. for the band so I mean we, those are two amazing tours right they're like the biggest bands in the scene you know considerably totally. and so the next goal is to tour for somebody like Slipknot or or Dive. yeah Lincoln Park 30 seconds to Mars or something and he's just looking up now totally so. and a Mice and Men was on both of those tours so you've shared the whole experience with them yeah, yeah? yeah. Wow. So that works yeah, out. yeah, yeah we're kind right. of sharpening our teeth together I mean they're like yeah, we're, I feel like we're both part of sort of the new guard I mean obviously they're they they're kind of like, uh, I guess, the first wave, and we're, you know, like, just coming in, killing all the, like, soldiers who just, like, left there, still dead from their first attack. You know what I'm saying? It's like the avant garde, right? Right. All right. Yeah. Trust me, that's like <laughs> Medulla yeah, that's an apt application of avant garde. Okay, like, thank, okay, thank you, Scott. Thank you. Thank, thank you. All right. Thank okay. you. No, I got it. Dude. I, Thanks, you. I was feeling you. I was feeling you. Plebs, get out of here. <laughs> I know, this what? should be a fun what? one. I'm going to try what? to change Never the subject. <laughs> Your favorite viral video is... Do you guys watch a lot of YouTube on oh, the road? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. My favorite viral video we actually used in our old yeah. our old set. It's uh, just so, this little kid stuttering, talk, trying to talk about his dream. Oh. And it's like... Anybody want to reenact that? Yeah. Try, try, try. <laughs> I can't do it. You got it. How does it start? Have you ever had a dream? Oh, yeah. Dream? Have you had, ever had a dream that... um? That you would, that you could, um, that you would, that you could, that he, he could, he, he would, he would, he would do you so much that you could do anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it was. And, and we used it in our set. And then it was like all this ambient noise and it was all serious. It was a lot of stuff. like creepy like sounds, but it was like this kid. Yeah. <laughs> our favorite thing is to make all these creepy sounds and like movie, like suspenseful, like music break. Right. With like just the most ridiculous, like <laughs> vocal audio we can find. Like how generic, how generic it is to have some like scary, like, oh, totally. like, and then a thing that says like, if you look at evil in the face, it'll look back at you. Yeah. But wait till you hear the one we, we have oh, yeah. on this tour. It's so <laughs> funny. Yeah, that's awesome. That is so good. I think that's brilliant. And now last finish the sentence. The best prank you ever witnessed was when? You guys really seem oh, like wow. pranksters, so I'm expecting something good now. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, dang. What's oh, oh, I know the biggest prank, the best prank. It was, it was, um... It was when they switched. Oh, it might have been on our tour 
when they switched uh, the guitar players, they hooked it up so when the guitar player hit the the oh, the that solo, was, that was uh, he's Wee's headliner. Oh yeah, he's Wee's headliner. They hit the solo button. It actually switched it to another person's guitar no. off stage. So he went to go solo, and his guitar was muted. And somebody off stage just went beep, 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 beep. <laughs> and it's just like was like what is going on? Yeah. <laughs> or one time I was in the middle of like one of the more intimate songs, and my, on my solo tour, and one of the more intimate songs in the set. And I was singing, and somebody was like, they were pr- they were messing with me, and they were pitching my voice. So I was like, <laughs> no. I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> it was like, <laughs> I was so pissed. Yeah. Well, there's also Joe Lanky's stuff. Uh. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, okay, okay. So when we were on our UK headliner okay. with Crown Shout the Empire, out to Joe with one yeah. last breath, by the way. Uh, there was a band that opened the tour from the UK. And the last night, we walk on stage, I, I bend down, I pick up my mic, and I'm like, what's up everybody? And there's a big rubber dildo just attached to my microphone. So all the crowd can see is a big wiener, like just <laughs> bouncing around on my face. And I'm like, and I finally noticed, and I threw the mic down, went to grab the spare mic, boom, an even bigger <laughs> one, an even bigger one on the spare mic. And it was like the perfect sequence. And then we pulled them down and we got them off. Like and then he walked out, Joe walked out half naked in a thong with a blow up doll and just like crowd sir. It was awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. I feel like that's what happens when you're on tour. That's how you entertain yourselves, really. You just <laughs> embarrass so, each other. Last pranks are, are known uh, on like friend tours, you know, and like right. a lot of bands do it. Some, some bigger tours, they don't do it, but a lot of no. the smaller tours, it happens and it's funny. I know. I, I love pranks. the end of tour pranks, but I feel like a lot of people aren't doing it now. And I get so excited when I end up at one of those shows and then nothing yeah. happens. So maybe something on this tour? Are you thinking yet? I know oh, yeah. the tour just I'm, started. I'm, I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting Bring Me the Horizon. I, I don't really good. care, man. Yeah. I'm getting good. something. They're from UK, man. They could take a good laugh. I'm gonna do it. Yeah, they can do it. They can deal with it. Uh, we'll, we'll probably get in trouble by their management, but I'm sure let, I'm sure let lives down to, to do some pranking too. Yeah, they so. seem pretty chill. So I think yeah. something needs to happen on this tour. Yeah. But we gotta talk about your music a little bit. Enough about the pranking. You guys have your album, your self-titled album, coming out on the 18th of February. And this is your first full-length album, um, so I'm wondering how is it going to compare to the Black Diamonds EP that you released last year? It's better. <laughs> it's better. Well, that's a good start. <laughs> more mature. I would say more mature. We just kind of mm-hmm. figured out our sound better. Yeah, so. I feel like that's a common answer. It's always more mature the next release. So. And, and we have Josh, which that's is true. he's a drummer. Yeah. Great drummer. <laughs> There's live drums. On the yeah, That's live drums. Around. Good. We actually got to sit behind the kit and really do some organic you know material with the album where as before we were we didn't have enough time to really put together a sound we just had to get it out because it was anticipated so it was just Ty like programming you know the drums and stuff so right and did you experiment with any new elements on this album that you didn't on the EP all of you were nodding your head so what in particular well with Josh especially I mean Uh you want to talk about some of your parts we started Uh, even songs with his parts I mean yeah there's Uh like there's one what is it? I know it's Joshy Poo. What's the oh what's uh, the sad, ghost? sad ghost? Sad ghost. I guess sad ghost was like Culture. came from me, AJ, and Ty just in, a, in Danny's garage in yeah. Pasadena. Um, yeah. I was just kind of like jamming around on, on a kit, and then Ty was like, "Oh, okay." And then he like programmed it out, and AJ kind of wrote from it, and then I guess from there it just kind of progressed into what it was. Yeah, and it um, turned out to be like one of my favorites on the record, man. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's the grooviest. Uh, that's the grooviest it's song. It's a lot of fun to play. Yeah. Um, but uh. I don't know. I mean, I think I think everybody kind of pushed pushed the boundaries in yeah. every in their individual. This guy slapped finally. I got yeah, yeah, it. Finally. Because yeah. I've done it live like this whole time, but like I finally got to actually record it. But I think uh, one of the biggest differences is everybody had a lot more input. Because before it was like no, we didn't. Even, you know, people didn't even know who was in the band really. Like <laughs> no, that was a bit confusing <laughs> for a while. Yeah. So like uh, now that like there is a band, and we're a solid and like. We respect like everybody's musical input and everybody has like, you know, it's like it meshes. So uh, when we're writing songs, like some things will start with Josh. A lot, most things start with Ty and AJ still, right. but like even like Michael like had like ideas musically as well as lyrically and like Tyler obviously like doing a lot more stuff with his voice, you know. Totally, yeah. yeah. And now on the Black Diamonds EP, you guys covered a lot of different topics lyrically. I know you had like relationship stuff, some stuff about past band member drama. Uh, we're not gonna get into that. But on this album, what topics were you writing about? What are you singing about on this album? Um, a lot of songs were just like based on like 
past experiences of each person in the band or like of our close friends around us or specific issues that our Ish. fans actually yeah always, well that's kind of sorry. that's kind of the basis around the band anyways um uh and and actually a lot of stuff that fans wrote us about um we actually incorporated a lot of the fans letters into the album art if you notice there's like a bunch of scribbles and writing it's actually where fans wrote us in uh letters about what they were dealing with and stuff um and we are you yawning Man, I'm you about to sneeze. sneeze. Low key, but that <laughs> was not low key at all. <laughs> low. Um, uh, but we wrote a lot about like divorce and like relationship um, problems and fallouts, and uh, we wrote a song about like losing loved ones. And there was a couple more fun songs just about having you know fun or like being in love or whatever. Um, and never losing your flames. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was all it was all pretty much like. Just about personal stuff. Yeah. Like it's, it's probably a lot more, like, takes a, a bigger step in a positive direction Good. lyrically, as far as as far as like, um, I mean, I guess like never lose your flames, yeah. uh, disappear. I think those are like, I feel like they'll hit home pretty well with a lot of people. Yeah. And I was actually talking to some viewers in line, asking if they had any fan questions, and someone asked the inspiration behind the band name. So I guess it's quite literal. Really, yeah. just issues people are going through. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I know this album was a work in progress for you guys for quite a while. And I think the release date had changed a few times before you settled on this one. Yeah. Um, so how did your vision for the album evolve from start to finish? There was never really like a specific vision. That's why <laughs> it's kind of, <laughs> that's like, well, we say we, we figured out our sound. We just figured out how to, to like pull our songs together. We never really figured out sound because we don't have like a specific sound or specific genre but we have like the style that is issues and that's kind of that um so there was never really like a general vision we just wanted to make really really unique songs no matter what they sounded like we no were going to bring them back in to the issue sound but yeah no fillers just uh, all like singles i stuff. think like with this album especially i just wanted to focus and make sure that everyone was like going to their fullest potential. Like we have somebody, we have a bassist in the band who can slap, like he needs to be slapping at some point. Like like Tyler, like like it can like spit. So we need to have some like Tyler doing some rapping and stuff. Like Tyler like writes great like hooks. Like all our hooks need to be like perfect. Like I need to be like stepping up. I just wanted to make sure, like anything we can do at a as a band capable of, we we'll make sure we're doing it. Because like totally. if, if we're not, then like we're not like realizing our full potential is, like to our sound. So with this album, it's just like, Part of the reason every song kind of sounds different is because we're kind of like trying to do everything that we could possibly think of, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. So and do it, do it as well as we could. So it seems like you guys are really proud of this album. I could tell you guys really worked hard on this. But is there one song that you are the most proud of? If maybe that's each of you have a different one. We all have different favorites, and that's kind of how the the singles have come about, just based on catchiness and, and market value but just really comes down to like which ones are each person's favorite and which one we all agree on the most but um i don't i can't i couldn't tell you which one we're most proud of probably disappear because it's so um it's like diverse in its own way like from start to finish and it just ends really triumphant and we it was very um it was very self-sufficient because we we put together the choir at the end and, and sky actually orchestrated the whole thing and um yeah it was just a really cool like approach for a, a song that i don't think metal's really seen before totally so. and i and i know you guys were saying that every song sort of has a different sound different style and i feel like that's so true to you guys on the ep you mixed a, a lot of different genres metal pop electronic r&b i mean you name it you've probably incorporated it into your music somehow um but there are a lot of other bands trying to fuse genres the way you guys are so what are you doing to set yourselves apart from everyone else i'll scratch over the breakdowns that's basically that's basically <laughs> <Hey. it. laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> I don't know. We just try to, I mean, this sounds so bad, but we just try to do it the best. We try to do it better than anything we hear. We, try, mm -hmm. we want to be better than everybody. I mean, it's not like a competition, but like, <laughs> it's it just, is now. It's, it's not a competition, but I'm just like, me personally, like, I'm like, uh, <laughs> I'm like a really like, how you say, like, um, competitive type of dude, I guess. So I just want our sound to be like the best it could possibly be. Mm -hmm. I want it to be better than like, anyone trying to do like what we're trying to do and i'm not trying to be arrogant but i'm just saying like it's just trying to get trying to be like trying to what am i trying you know. i want to be the very best well, that no one well, ever was uh, i think kendrick said it that's best. it right 
in that uh, in that verse he did uh, where he's like, I got yeah, I I got love for you, but I'm trying to murder you niggas. You know? <laughs> oh, thanks. Can you say niggas? <laughs> but you know, I, I can I can say you can. I can. Uh, anyway. This is YouTube. I'm not bleeping anything. Oh, okay, so, yeah. right, cool. but you so know that, know that word I misused, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. And last year you had got you guys had um, mentioned the Diamond Dreams EP, which was supposed to be like an acoustic EP sort of thing. And yeah. um, your Wikipedia still says to be announced. Yeah. The release date. We're gonna drop it this year before Warp Tour. That's okay. that was the plan all along. Kind of oh. like last year, we wanted to drop it, but then we started thinking more about it and thought it wasn't it wasn't proper. We didn't want to be like we didn't want to get bigger off of maybe you know people liking. Uh, an acoustic record. We wanted to wait until the record. We've actually went back into the studio to record more songs off the new record um, and added more production. It's not really an acoustic album anymore. It's more like a, just a reimagination record. A more vibey, really chill, hip like version of our best and favorite songs and yeah, just like something you can vibe to. You know, like when you get back from the show, you want more, but you kind of want to mellow out. So you just true. put in the acoustic record in it. That's so smart, because I mean, so many bands are releasing acoustic albums, and it's right. cool to see something different from you guys, something yeah. refreshing. Which is another example of us trying to push our boundaries and just like totally. live our full potential um, as musicians, because a lot of it is is like jazz comp composed, like jazz and oh. and stuff. So it's like, it's pretty intricate and, and beautiful. <laughs> yeah, so jazz, another genre to add to your belt. Yeah. There it is. And I know I heard you guys say in another interview that you rewrote King of Amarillo with some new lyrics because now you're friends with What Was Me. Yeah. Well, yeah. They, well, they're not our fans anymore. But yeah, yeah. Um, but are we going to get to hear that new version? Oh, yeah, yeah, it'll be on there for sure. It's just like a less dramatic, you know, right. thing. People I'm really sorry, connect yeah. to certain parts of that song. And some people like it because it is aggressive and it's like a trash talking song, but a lot of people just connect to the more like positive parts of the song. So we just used that and then kind of rewrote the song for what it should have been about to begin with. So. All right, well, I'm excited to hear that then because uh, some positivity is always good. And what do you think is the biggest misconception about the band that you would like to clear up? Why so much chug chug? Yeah, okay, what? yeah, literally. Okay, this is, okay, two things okay. bother me. Yeah, drop it. One, okay. one. All the autotune comments, I literally just do not understand. Like, I, I just want to understand what you're hearing that you think is autotune. Whether His it's voice delay. is just too perfect. That's what I'm saying. I mean, like, <laughs> like come watch us live. We don't use autotune live. I mean, we don't have enough money for all that. <laughs> uh, we don't use autotune live. Come listen to them live. Like, okay, that's number one. Number two is stop asking AJ to do guitar solos. Like, what are you doing? This is not Journey. Like, this is a metal, this is, we're like, not a metal band, we're like metalcore, whatever. Whatever we are, we're not gonna have some guitar solos, like ever. So like, stop, to, like, stop saying that. Uh, those are the two things that bother me the most. Like, I got an idea. What? We can hook my mic up to a MIDI and make it sound like a guitar, and I'll just do a run. <laughs> I'll do a run solo, and then we can just auto tune the piss out oh, of it okay. <laughs> and please everybody. Please, everybody. please shut everybody up. <laughs> well, there goes that misconception. Turns out it might be true in the future. Yeah. <laughs> be on the lookout for our super auto tune guitar solo record. I need to hear that now. <laughs> and we got a fan question from Andrea asking, "What do you do when you're not on tour?" I, if you said, where's the Love, Sex, Riot video, I was going to walk out of this interview. I thought wait, that was what? the fan question. Not for you. Oh. Wait, why would you run? Okay, wait, wait, wait. We need to address that. Okay. Why? Uh, uh, I opened up a can of worms, my man. <laughs> no, we just we decided we were never going to put out a Love, Sex, Riot video because it didn't turn out the way we wanted. But oh. um, And we, we actually lost all the footage somehow in existence, so oh. maybe we'll find it one day or whatever. But for I'd now, rather just bury it. Yeah. yeah <laughs> We're not, we're not on the lookout for it, but like it's somewhere on a hard drive somewhere, and we don't know where. We so. need to start. We need to open one of our new vid videos with a Love, Sex, Riot video, and then just like cut it out. Like, yeah. <laughs> like oh, here you go. Not really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we, yeah, we sent it out on a hard drive some time ago, and it got lost. So I don't, I don't care. It's gone now. I don't ever have to see it. So whatever. But okay, well, anyways, thank back you for to your answering that. But yeah, what do you guys do when you're not on tour? Josh plays wild. I was trying to, I was trying to make fun of him earlier. <laughs> Josh, Josh is probably the most active, I think. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I do play wild. I was playing wild at Starbucks this morning. Um, oh. no, <laughs> no, but uh, uh, I don't know. I play, I play a lot when I'm home. I play drums a lot when I can. Um, yeah, me and Brian, our sound guy who's out with us, uh, we both run a studio in Atlanta. Um, so I guess whenever I'm not out here, me and him are doing that pretty much as soon as we get home until we leave again. So. Mm -hmm. um, I guess 
And I mean, you and you and uh, you guys do. Oh yeah, we record. We record bands. We just recorded a band over the break. And the Hoover Mills. And the Hoover Mills. Dot dot dot. And the Hoover Mills. Shout out to Troy. But uh, yeah, we record bands. I do a lot of production. I've been working on. We write pop songs. Oh yeah, we write some songs together. I've been working on a solo record. He's been really helping me with that, which is awesome. I'm gonna be playing a set at Warp Tour by myself. In addition to the issues set on Spotify stage, so yeah, and then my album's you know gonna be out hopefully <laughs> by then. So yeah, my my personal album, which is cool, and his personal album too. So we we just work on. Ah, oh, it sucks. We're not on tour. We work on music, man. It's literally, <laughs> we're literally always busy. But, I think that's awesome though that you're dedicated to it. I mean, it's not just work for you guys. It's your life, and yeah, that's I think it's what awesome. Loves doing. So, yeah. yeah, it's kind of like totally. at least for me, it's kind of. I live and breathe it. It's yeah, my it's religion. Really know how to do. So yeah, it's true. my religion. True. Praise music. <laughs> Not praise music, but oh, okay. praise cool. music. All right. <laughs> and now, what are your plans for right after this tour with Bring Me the Horizon? I know it just started. We're like three shows in now, but what's coming up after this? The fans More touring. Uh, we're, we're back in the much. UK. Yes. Oh, I'm coming to see you in the UK and actually all of Europe, Germany. It's all sold out. Sorry, um, but for the people watching that have tickets, we will be seeing you soon. And then we're doing Warp Tour, and then hopefully a headliner in the fall, and just touring all year basically. And uh, some of us are in the process of moving to LA. Um, and yeah. oh, yeah. Ready. Ready. Yeah. oh, this guy! Oh. Hey! Oh, no, I'm so sorry. Uh, no pictures. Aww. Uh, uh. <laughs> well, there's that then. Oh, I love uh, Ashton Carlittle, right? <laughs> Ashton Carlittle, I love him. He's so hot. He's got all the coolest tattoos. <laughs> oh. We didn't just mock half of the fans at this show tonight. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I was mocking my aunt in, in Boston. Oh. She loves him. <laughs> oh, okay. And you mentioned a headlining tour. Is that going to be your first headlining tour our as first, Issues? Yeah. yeah. Well, one. yeah, our well, first we US. Did a co-headliner in UK. Well, uh, yeah. But this will be our official first like Issues headlining uh, show. So tour. Right. I mean. So. Well, that is super exciting. Well, thank you guys so much yeah, for hanging out. You. Woo! So much exciting <laughs> stuff coming up from you guys. I'm so excited. And the album. February 18th, pick up a copy. Also subscribe to our channel for more interviews and I will right. see you next time. Okay, last time everyone thought this was great so we're gonna do it again. On the count of three, everybody has to make a really weird face and then your job is to screenshot it and tweet it to us and make fun of us. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Okay. Okay, <laughs> bye guys. Peace. <laughs>